Hello, welcome back everyone in the Laravel plus Nox social authentication series and today we're gonna first of all look at some bug fixes because I just started up my project and I now have no CSS loading in so what you might want to do is run npm install um, you know remove your package.log.json uh, remove your node modules re reinstall maybe run npm update and once you maybe have this problem as well uh, there's a small fix we have to do regarding the few bootstrap package and that is going into our nux config and we're just gonna go into you know below these modules we're gonna say uh, actually let me look it up here bootstrap strap wow thank you google so bootstrap view go to the documentation and then just copy this over and then what we want to do is we want to make sure that these are true and then restart our server here and then it should be back to a, to a working state all right yeah there we are so this is also something we need to address so if we go to the top nav here say toggleable, toggle, toggleable whatever is lg See, that's not working. Let's see if it actually, yeah. All right, so that's good. Um, we also want to fix these buttons here. Those changed as well. So let's go to our login and just make sure that this is button light. Uh, this one button light as well. All right, that's not working as well. And then I want to make sure because now if I click login, for example, I get this exception, which that is expected, but before it would just reject the uh, async promise, but now it's actually thrown an error. So I need to make sure that I wrap this in a try catch block. Then we're just going to return this here uh, and make sure that it doesn't throw an actual error. So same for this one. catch all right yeah that's working again we got our validation errors I think this might be new as well this little X so now we got that out of the way um, we can look at the back end uh, and what I want to do first of all is create a so uh, user social table which is going to store the information regarding the uh, social login users so I'm gonna make a migration here so PHP artists and make migration uh, create user social table that's what I'm gonna name it and then I'm gonna add the create flag and I'm gonna say user social so that should you know go ahead and create our, our migration for us all right so that has created our migration let's look in our PHP storm and actually fill this out that's the wrong one all right there we are so I want to have a unsigned integer here which is going to be a user ID and below here I'm going to say table uh, foreign user ID relates um, what was it again it was references actually references ID on the users table so that's that and then what I want to add is a string which is going to be the social ID so the ID we get returned from the service but it could be that some services don't return this so it's going to be nullable and then the service which we always know so all right that looks good to me so let's migrate this so that has migrated it let's look in our database if that if it has added it so refresh user social yeah there we go so this has the the, the key added to it so that's good so now we need to create a model so 
we have that in our models directory here. So I'm going to create a new file. User social is the model going to be. I'm going to namespace that under the app slash models. Class is going to be user social, extending on the base eloquent model. User social table. And I don't think this is necessary because we got the, the naming right, so it would predict it like this. But I just like to define this out because it's a bit easier to reference everything in the future if you come back to this project for, you know, if you haven't worked on it for a few weeks or months. So what I also want to do is create this relation out just so we can access it later in the future. So this has one. Then that's going to reference the user class ID, it's a foreign key, user ID is our local key. So that's our model created. So now what we can do is we can also add some relations in our user uh, model because of course the user relates to this one as well. So I'm going to add a social relation. So this is going to return as many because one user can have more social logins. I mean, uh, depends on how you want to set this up. I don't think we're going to actually make use of it that way, but theoretically this could happen. So the foreign key is going to be user ID and the local key is going to be ID in this case. And we're going to have a function that's just going to uh, tell us if the user has a social account linked to this account. So has social link. So that is going to receive a service. And then we're going to return a boolean. Which is going to say this social. So we're going to use that migration. Uh, sorry, that relation where service passing in that service and then we're going to say count. So this is going to return to us uh, true or false. Uh, if we check for example has this user does this user have a Facebook account linked um, or Google or GitHub or whatever service you might want to check. Uh, so that is going to be handy um, when we you know when we want to check that in the future. So now what, what I want to do is go to my controller here, uh, API of social login controller, and I want to just define out my protected auth, and then I want to pass in a JWT auth, which is what we're using for our authentication. So it's going to be auth, this auth is auth. So that is going to pass in the JWT auth object. And what I want to do now is remove this die dump. And what I actually want to do is make a, um, let's see here, I want to grab the email first of all, service user, oh, get email. And I also want to actually wrap this in try catch because I think what happens if you log in, for example, but you have like invalid, an invalid token or whatever, you get an invalid state exception. And I don't want the user to actually see a error page. I want them to get redirected to a um, URL. So to the to our client again. So this is going to be client base URL. If you haven't set this up, by the way, the client base URL, where is it here? So then you just make sure that you fill that in your EMV file and then that should all work. So appending on this, error equals enable to log in using service. Please try again. Uh, 
All right, so that's good. Um, if the service does not equal Google. So I'm just gonna do this because let's say we have Facebook or GitHub and we don't actually know if this email is verified and linked to the account so that the user owns this email. I don't want them to link it to that same account. So you might want to add like a different type of login system where someone can verify their email and still link to that account. But I'm just gonna go with simple here and uh, not link it to their account and create a new account if that is the case. So service user get ID. I'm just gonna say service local. So this is now going to say, for example, if the ID of the user in Facebook is one one at Facebook local. So it's gonna create an account with that email address. You can also leave the email blank or nullable. But um, this is how I'm going to do it because it's a bit easier. So now what we want to do before I do that, I want to have a function here. And that is get existing user. And receive the service user in here, the email and the service. So if service is Google, then we're going to do something and what we're going to do is return the user where the email is from that email we received. So email, email, or where has social and this is going to be a callback use service user for the service all right so I forgot these of course sorry so this is going to return query where social ID service user get ID where the service equals the service. Return the first one, of course. And if we don't have, uh, if we don't have Google as a service, we're just going to return a simple statement, which is going to say user social, where social ID is. The Service user get ID and then the first one return user social if we have them we're going to return that user relation otherwise we're going to return null so that is going to return a user if there is one uh, if not it's just going to return null so now I can say user equals this get existing user uh, service user email and service and if we don't have a user we're just going to create one so user equals user create so the name is going to be service user get name the email is going to be the email of course and the password is something we don't got, so that's just going to be blank. Um, so now I'm just going to die dump the user and see if it's actually working. So go to this, HTTPS, sign in with Google here. All right, so that has created our user. Let's see if it's in our database. It probably is. So, oh, we forgot to set this up. So that's not good. I, all right, so it did create the user, but if I do this again, I think it might create another one. Or actually find it by the email we just, yeah, it's gonna find it by the, by that same email, so that's good. But uh, I still need to make sure that this is going to 
create the user social entry. So we need to make sure that we don't take duplicate entries. So we're going to make another function, which is going to say needs to create social. So user, user, um, and a service. So return that the user does not have a social link inside with that service. So now we can make another if statement. If this needs to create social, passing in the user and passing in a service, then we create that user social entry. So what we're going to put in there is, of course, the user ID. Oops, user ID. It's going to be the user ID, social ID, which is going to be again the service user get ID, and then we're going to say service, which is going to be the service. And I think that's it. So I'm just going to still die dump the user and see if we got any errors. Um, let's see here. So I wonder if it actually, I think it might have, yeah, it inserted that entry here. Services Google. We still are using that same user. Let's check another service. So let's try GitHub. I'm going to sign in here. Authorize. Yeah, that has created it. And this time it made that uh, ID at github.local address. So as well here, you can see service GitHub, the social ID linked to this user, which is uh, perfectly linked. And the name, the email, which is in this case a made up one. Um, you know, that's that. So now all we have to do is make sure we get redirected to our client here. So what we do, redirect again, say EMV client base URL, and then say token equals, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the auth object from user, which is a function in JWT auth, and that is going to grab a token, and then we're going to be redirected to the client base URL with a token. But uh, we might want to, you know, add a nice URL in here. So what I actually want to do, is I want to make sure that the URL is good, but let's see. All right, so I'm going to make this all slash social callback. So this is going to be a year around the future, auth slash social dash callback, and with the token. So let's see if it actually redirects us with that token. So GitHub, client error. So we got a client exception. We want to actually prevent this, but um, could try to catch all exceptions, but I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, that does work. Uh, our client's not on, so that's fine. I'm going to try with Google again. Let's go. Let's see if it, yeah, that is our token. As you can see, that starts with EY, so that means that's base64 for the first character of JSON, so that's fine. So, yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, that's it for this episode. We now are redirecting our user to uh, the localhost port 1000 with the, the token, the JWT token. So next time we're going to look at actually signing the user in and maybe creating some stuff for our front end to make sure that the user can actually use their account in our next environment. So for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye bye.